Now, what an exciting year it's been in 2023 for Drysdale with the North Ballerine Aquatic Centre opening just last week and earlier in the year, the Borongook Drysdale Library. We're going to head inside and catch up with Anne-Marie as well as the architect and hear a bit about it. Anne-Marie, thanks so much for joining us on an episode of Ballerine Life. For about six or so months in, how's the community response been? The community response has been really positive. Yep. Um, we've had a lot of people through our doors, a lot of people really excited that something so big and beautiful has come to Drysdale. Yeah. We've got uh, two floors, so the top floor is for an adult collection and our bottom floor is a children's floor, but yeah. in that space we also have a large meeting room that can seat up to 60 people. Yeah. And we've got two little discussion rooms that people can book out. Yeah. We have a beautiful internal courtyard where people can sit and have their lunch and enjoy. Yeah. And we have a lot of little quiet little spots around the library that people can sit and enjoy. Fantastic. And we've got some, this is probably not something that's going to go on the thing, but we have public <laughs> toilets, which we never had. So that's yeah. very exciting. <laughs> very flush too. A, uh, lots of free programs and things yes. that the community can get involved in. Tell us a bit about those. Yep, so we have regular programs every week where we've got baby time, story time and toddler time once a week. We also have some after school children's programs. Yeah. We have a lot of adult programs. So we have tech drop in, yeah. we've got book librarians, we've got author talks and we've got two book clubs that run out of the library and we also have book chat sessions, we've yeah. got craft sessions, board game sessions and it's all for free. Now obviously it's a, it's a brilliant community facility but what some people may not know it's also a, a hub for the City of Greater Geelong Council. Yes, so people can come into the council, talk to somebody, and they can also pay their rates, yep. do their dog rego, and ask all of the questions that they need to from the city council. Nice. Tip vouchers, can we get those here? Yes. I've always, always got clients asking about those when they're putting their homes on the market. Well, joining us now are the two architects, Danielle and Nicola. Thanks so much for joining us, but well done to the two of you for creating what is easily the most interesting building on the whole Ballerine Peninsula. I would love to hear a bit more about the design process, the influences, those kinds of things. Yeah, sure. So we're um, two practices collaborating on this uh, wonderful building, which has recently opened. I'm Danielle Peck, uh, Director of Architecture Associates. I'm Nicola Garrett, one of the directors of Antarctica Architects and worked on this also with the other director, Graham Christ. Now standing here in this beautiful open air courtyard, I believe there's over 4,000 plants on the roof. Tell me about the influence behind the design. Oh, well there was a few things we were thinking about when we started working on this project. Um, one of the big challenges we were trying to deal with was the levels across the site okay. and trying to keep that parkland that you can see behind us through yeah. the glass, trying to keep that parkland flow through to the back of the shopping centre and also have that lower level tuck in and connect at the shopping centre level. So to really kind of connect the town centre and create this circular building in the rain that that provided that cohesion. Yeah, absolutely. And probably another important factor is the circular form was part of an understanding and a conversation with both the Wadarung community, um, but also um, other residents of the community uh, that the Ballerine is a water terrain. Yep. So the, the circular building is, um, I suppose, represents a, a, a water hole, yep. a gathering spot, um, and the plants growing out of that. And obviously today it's now a community facility and I think the few times I've been in here, in equal measure, there's probably people here to borrow books and use computers, but I think there's a lot of people here just to see the building inside and out. It, it's such a great space downstairs with the, the kind of family zone and then up top is probably a more conventional library set up and then at the back, pavilion style, it's created just a really good use of this central space in Drysdale, I think. Fantastic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great to hear. Every time we come, it's really busy and we can see everything that we thought about being activated. And we love how the perimeter, all of the, the seating and benches sort of like hug the perimeter of the building and everyone can sit around looking out at the different views and that was one of the important factors. Like capturing the some of the landmarks in town yep. and on the Bellarine. So yeah, I think that's something that we find really great whenever we come here. Yeah, absolutely. And the library project itself instigating um, greater improvements in the landscape means that it's just um, much more usable and, and we're seeing that, especially now with the nicer weather. Absolutely. It's great. So we're luckily, we're actually open seven days a week. So we're open from nine until 5.30, Monday to Friday, yep. nine until five on a Saturday, and we have an afternoon on a Sunday from two until five. So if you've got kids who have a last minute assignment due Monday morning, 
Library Supply Centre. Can rush in. And for yes. those that want to join up as a member? Yeah, it's free to join up. You just need to come in, yep. sign up. Does, it takes about five minutes. And then you're free to borrow 40 items at a time and use all of our lovely facilities. Very good. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. It's been really great to see the new facility in person and hear a bit about it. As always, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Ballerine Life.